What's up everybody? Welcome to my channel. This is Tony from One Lead Code One Day. And this channel is going to do one lead code per day based on a theme or random choice. And basically, I'm going to be studying together with you guys and start on lead code problems that I have never done before as a non-CS major. So um, hopefully this is going to give you um, some helpful information by staying along with me and uh, look at you know the problems uh, uh, I run into, the, um, the solutions that I come up with, the mistakes I made, uh, and the success that I got. So with that being said, I am going to introduce you to the first series and it is dynamic programming. Dynamic programming is one of the most important um, algorithms um, being used in uh, interview questions for any uh, computer science algorithm related jobs and it is quite fun actually. So I'm going to use a, a number of problems uh, listed on lead code uh, about dynamic programming and walk them through with you guys together and uh, hopefully by the end of it you'll get a pretty good knowledge about dynamic programming all right so let's get started now I'm on lead code problem set page and there is a module called ultimate DP study plan. And that's what we're going to be doing today. We click into it. I just uh, got it started. There is, there are 21 problems in there. Uh, nine easy problems, 35 medium, and two hard problems. And there is a schedule of 21 days. And actually, um, there is about in total about 40, 40, 46 problems. So this is going to take about a month and a half. Uh, well, it's not a short journey, but you know, um, you're not get anywhere until you get started, right? So let's get started with the first one. Day one, problem 509, Fibonacci number. Easy, acceptance 69.1. Let's start now. By the way, we'll use Python as our language uh, because that is something that I am kind of familiar with. Not an expert, just a beginner. So we're just going to be sticking with Python. And I'll be using um, Jupyter Notebook as the interface. It's not the best for debugging, so maybe uh, along the way we'll, we'll use some other um, IDE integrated um, uh, development environment for, um, for debugging purposes. Okay, so now let's take a look at the problem itself. Fibonacci number. So I'm going to make actually the text larger because this is like a 4K screen. So if you're watching not in 4K, um, the small text could uh, could be annoying. Now, hopefully this is a better look. So we look at that. Um, Fibonacci number. Uh, so Fibonacci number commonly denoted Fn form a sequence called the Fibonacci sequence such that each number is the sum of the two preceding ones starting from 0 and 1 that is and you're given a list of uh, expressions and uh, just to I, I think um, most people are familiar with what Fibonacci number is but if you're not here is a very simple demo um, it basically says that the Fibonacci numbers start with 0 and 1 as the first and second um, numbers. And then the third one is going to be the sum of um, the first and the second number. So 0 plus 1 equals to 1. And similarly, the fourth number is going to be the sum of the second and third number. And that is 1 plus 1, which is 2. And for the fifth, it's going to be the sum of the third and fourth number. That is 1 plus 2, and it's going to be 3. Is that right? Yeah. 
Um, and then you have 2 plus 3, 5, 3 plus 5, 8, 5 plus 8, 11, and so on and so forth. So that is what Fibonacci number is. Right, okay, we're going to get back to the original template. Uh, so what are we going to do? We have the expression, and um, we're given n, and uh, we are asked to calculate fn. Uh, and there's some example outputs. Uh, so n is like the number of uh, uh, of numbers uh, you uh, uh, you're asked to uh, output. Um, not the number, like the specific number uh, in the ascending order in the Fibonacci uh, numbers list that you're asked to uh, to output. So if you're given n equals to two, you need to find um, the second number on the Fibonacci numbers list. Uh, and then you're going to have, if you're, uh, if n equals to 3, of course, you're going to want to output the third number on the Fibonacci list. Yeah, so things like that. Uh, and you have this kind of uh, input range from 0 to 30. Um, right. So uh, that is pretty, that is pretty um, straightforward, I guess. And uh, we, we, now we need to come up with like a strategy, all right? Um, all right, and we're going to start using some drawing boards for intuitiveness. So let's again rewrite the Fibonacci numbers. Mm, well, is it working? Yep. Here we go, the Fibonacci numbers. Um, let's make this thicker. Yeah, let's see if we can make this thicker. Uh, Pencil, line width. Let's make it four, shall we? Okay. Better? Yes. All right. So, Fibonacci numbers. Uh, so we have N. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. And of course, we have the F. Let's just call it F. Um, the first one is zero by default. Second one is zero by default. And then the third one is zero plus one, which is one. The fourth one is one plus one, which is two. The fifth one is one plus two, which is three. Let's make two more. Six and seven. So this will be five and this will be eight. Right. So that is what Fibonacci numbers are. And uh, what is going to be our calculation intuition? Well, um, the, the simplest strategy, I guess, um, according to, you know, the, uh, the recursive calculation function we have, it is Fn equals to F m minus 1 plus F n minus 2. So according to this, um, um, you know, recursive relationship, uh, what we can, what we can do is that we can, you know, we can store, we can store numbers. Uh, so this could be like stored in a variable. And then each time we, um, we expand the list, we're just going to look into look into the stored numbers we have and we just perform this um, ad, you know addition operation and get the next number sounds pretty simple enough right so let's see uh, if, if we want to calculate n equals to 5 and find f um, find f right so what this is going to require is that we're going to have to store f0 of course and f1 that's uh, those are given by default, and then the calculation starts with the with F two. So, um, because we want to get F five, we first need to get F four, right? Um, so we need to get to uh, F four. So F five, given n equals to five, 
we're gonna need to find f5 equals to f4 um, plus f3 and uh, but we don't have them yet so it's gonna call like a recursive function uh, uh, um, right so that this will call uh, um, n equals 4 and it will um, look for um, f4 equals to f3 plus f2 um, which uh, I guess uh, f2 sorry I made a mistake there so this should be 1 right now instead of 0 and um, this should be 2 so we already have f1 and f2 so we have this but we don't have this yet um, and f3 this is going to be n equals to 3 and we're going to be looking for f3 equals to f2 plus f1 and we have these both so the only thing that we don't have is f3 and um, um, because we don't have f3 it's gonna again iterate and then we're gonna be looking for f3 and we're gonna find it this way so it looks like we have just closed the iteration loop um, here so what is the code implementation well uh, we can build a um, we can build a function just, just we can build the function to inc incorporate this expression and then um, um, in another function where, where we perform the iterative um, the recursive operation we're gonna uh, repeatedly call this function uh, until we get all the numbers worked out so this one uh, we're gonna call it let's give it a name um, uh, we're gonna call it F um, recursive right so um, this is like the uh, uh, iterative function right like the yeah you know, let's go to F uh, iter and then this process of iterating um, of iterating the calculation we're gonna call this function uh, F recur recursive right let's just call it F recur so we're gonna have two functions in total we're gonna have F recur and F iter F iter iter iteration whatever yep so let's get back to the code um, we're gonna test it here Actually, you know what? We are going to uh, test it on um, our own platform. So, how do we do that? Well, we're gonna do it. Um, so, this is problem number number what? Number five hundred nine. Five hundred nine. So, we're gonna create a file in our Jupyter notebook. Let's make a new file new Python 3 notebook we're gonna call it leaked 509 and uh, we're gonna just copy the problem itself there just good practice you know uh, and we're gonna make this a uh, markdown and we're gonna paste the code there as well yep yep uh, there we go and uh, yep right so now we have it Let's build the function. Um, define the function um, f i t e r, right? 
So if you remember what a function definition would be, it have a, it has a name as a parenthesis for inputs, and then a colon, and then you also want this uh, best practice for documentation. Got it. So what we need is a number n, and then oh yeah, we're gonna have this uh, so f eater. Uh, this is the iteration function for Fibonacci uh, for Fibonacci series, I guess. Yeah, and, uh, and inputs uh, n. Um, right, so this is how you document the uh, right. So type n uh, integer, yes, and uh, return type, right? So r type also integer. There we go. And you also want to maybe build some examples. Yeah, I like to put examples here. Um, F Iter, I guess, right, one that would uh, return uh, um, zero. F iter of uh, two, that would give us uh, one. Is that right? Yeah, let's relate by default. Um, and then F iter three this would still give us one f eater four this will still give us one no this is gonna give, this is gonna give us two right yeah um yeah those are the examples so what do I do um make some if conditions right so if n is less than uh, less than or equal to th um, two. Right. Well, let's just say if n equals one, return zero. Else, if n equals 2, return 1. Um, right. So else, this is a real deal. Uh, because it's, it's um, I guess it's iterative, uh, we're going to return uh, f iter and minus 1 plus f eater n minus 2. Greater than 2 is going to be at least 1, which makes sense. Okay, so um, I think that's it. I think that's about it. So, right. Let's now make some test cases. Uh, we're going to call, uh, yeah, let's see, uh, 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 uh. this should be, you know, should be zero equals to F eater zero. Let's see. What are you doing? Well, there's something wrong. Uh, well, well, of course. Should be zero. Come on. Do you turn anything? You're not returning anything, are you? Why, why are you not returning anything? 
Oh, right. So we should say shoot be zero. It's not defined. Why? Oh. Right, right. Okay. So let's just say let's just, let's just do this. Um, print. We want to print um, uh, the number, I guess, yeah, f liter 1. Let's see what we got. Yeah, and so it's 1. That makes sense. Um, we also want, like, expectations, right? So expectations. Uh, do we have, like, a function, you know, to, to expect? Uh, well, print uh, input zero expect input one expect uh, expect zero right and that is right and uh, okay good enough I mean we can do this all day right input to expect one uh, input three expect uh, input three expect uh, one uh, input uh, four expect two right let's do a few more input five expect uh, expect three input 6 expect 2 plus 3 it's 5 uh, input 7 expect 3 plus 5 it's expecting 8 so uh, yep yep uh, 8 ah uh, 7 yeah okay so let's uh, see right so these expectations are all met so I guess that's it I mean isn't it Right, this is like an iterative decision, iterative uh, definition. I think we got it. Um, we didn't really use any dynamic programming though, but uh, we solved it anyway. All uh, right, so let's just remove that. Remove that. Yeah, just for consistency. Right for consistency, just do it like that. Uh, wait. wait, yeah, yeah, that's it. So, run code. Did we pass the test? Oh, what was it? Global name is not defined. Oh yeah, the the function name, of course. Let's try it again. Twenty six milliseconds. Right. Let's just submit it. See if it works. Runtime error. Why is the error? What do you mean fit, fit is not defined? Well, the runtime is accepted, but uh, the submission failed. Huh? This is kind of kind of interesting. Oh, uh, why is it not defined? Uh, global name FIB is not defined. Oh, okay. I don't know. Maybe you need to write, it's a member function, so you do that. You do that. Let's try that. 
Pokemon coat. Now submit. What, Lone Rancher? Why is that? Input 3, I'll put as 1, expecting 2. Hmm. That is, you know, kind of weird. Class solution, define fib. Why? Why isn't that working? I am like a little bit. Right, this this worked. Um, right. So now let's uh, we will next use class member function to test the same algorithm, same function. Code above. Right, um, here we're going to use markdown, and uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of weird, but we'll, we'll find out. Let's see, we have a class definition, uh, yes, and hopefully it works, and now we're going to just test it, test cases. Let's do the first one. Or let's just do the one that failed. Um, input 3, expect 1. Wait. Input 3, expect 2? Really? Are you kidding me? Okay, so you're saying... <sighs> Oh, there's an F0. I got it. So you're... Okay, let's let's correct that. So, my bad. Okay. There's actually an F0. So, let me just correct this. I think we just need to... Uh, move this by 1. So, this is going to be 0. This is 1. This is 2. This is 3. This is four, this is five, this is six. Well, yeah, uh, let's actually, you know, to make it cleaner, I'm gonna delete this and just rewrite it, okay? Uh, it's gonna be, yeah, normal, blend mode, fill, outline. Let's change the color, okay? Red, because we made a mistake. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. So, yeah, everything else is good. So, F5, it goes down to, you know, F. Right. Uh, these two, yeah. These two are different, too. Now, we just want to, I guess, remove this part. Yeah, actually we have F0. And F1 now, yep. Exactly. And, uh, so that means, um, F2, do we have it? So that means F2, we also don't have it. We should have outline, let's do uh, red. Now, we don't have this. We don't have this. Um, we don't have this, but we have that. Yep, and uh, F2, yeah. So we just need to add one entry to this like when we have n equals to uh, n equals to 2 uh, our f2 equals to f1 plus f0 yeah so then the f2 and f2 here they 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 all go here 
and that is done. I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, now we go back to our lead code, and we're going to uh, basically change these things. That is 0, 1, 2, and 3. Right, so, is that right? We're expecting the range to be 0 and 30. Yeah, yeah, right. So, if n equals to 0, we return 0. If it's like that, we return 1, else like that. Yeah, I think now this function is good. Um, so we're going to actually, let's restart the kernel, um, clear all the output. Right, now that, now input, we're going to change the inputs, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right, now let's run it, everything expected, yeah, next we're going to test this, and uh, basically, we're going to change these as well. And uh, yeah, just, just paste that there. Uh, well, or just change it to 0, change it to 1. Now, this should be good. Let's take a look again. Everything seems to be fine. So, uh, test cases. Now let's say uh, s equal to solution, and uh, right, we're gonna do s. Actually, we just need to test one of them, right? Input zero, expect zero. Oh, name solution is not defined. Oh, we didn't run this. Okay. Input zero, expected zero. Uh, S fib right we can we can do this all day but uh yeah let's just do it only thing we need to change is to change the name of these functions into class member functions and yep the test passed so we are simply going to copy paste this back into our lead code uh, from here down to here I think I think that's all I just run code and see right submit again judging accepted all right um, it took about one second actually it's not it's not fast and uh, and it's quite you know heavy too on the memory side so we have an okayish code but it's not using dynamic programming first of all and second it's it's not really very efficient um, well we're going to have to figure out a way to do this in a dynamic programming way, shouldn't we? Right. That's uh, that's what we need to do. And um, looking back, let's see if we can figure this out on, on, on ourselves. Um, if we can figure this out on ourselves. It turned out that actually we first of all we didn't need this recurring function. I mean just by calling this f eater or fib function iteratively we can get it done already uh, because that's what recursive function does on itself. Uh, that's one thing, right? And then we need to find a way to, exp uh, to, to do this in a pr dynamic programming way. I don't know if it's like already dynamic programming because look, we're doing things recursively. 
And when we're doing rec things recursively, we are basically kind of like working backwards. Uh, and, and that's kind of like the spirit of dynamic programming, right? Like propagation backwards um, down to the root of it, like the initial value, two values. So yeah, maybe this is already the dynamic programming spirit of things. Well, then maybe let's just take a look at some of the solutions here. Uh, for example, for example, uh, we can take a look at one of those solutions. Approach one recursion. Use recursion to compute the Fibonacci number of a given integer. And there's a tree that shows this recursion. I guess that's what we did, but yeah, I think that's what we did. Ah, I see, I see, I see the point. I see the point. So we are doing exactly this recursion. Um, but the thing is, we're doing things repeatedly. For example, uh, Fib2 has been calculated once twice three times excuse me and fb fib3 has been calculated twice and that is not good right because it repeated the calculation is a waste of resource all right so yeah that gives us actually some insights let's see if we can figure this out and improve um improve improve it uh knowing that this is like yeah approach one recursion I think we know what this is now, so let's, uh, yeah, fancy text, approach, approach one, recursion, recursion, right, like, yeah, this is probably approach one, and uh, drag to resize, let's move it, um, approach one, recursion, yeah, let's three approach one, recursion, I'll just say simple recursion, all right? Simple recursion. It's not the best, probably not the worst either. Uh, let's see. Uh, color. Let's make it, uh, make it what? Make it green. Whoa, whoa. Make it green, make it green, come on. Uh, outline fill. 100% fill. Yep, let's see. Why is it not working? All right, it's not working. Never mind. Uh, let's expand this and we're going to work on it. Uh, let's see, see, see. The canvas size. Snap to guys surface blueprint. Uh, how do you how do you save this? Mm, uh, trying to uh, I'm trying to you know basically make this uh, expand a little bit the canvas size. All right, new new blueprint well can I expand this if not I'm just gonna save it first and then uh, let's save export uh, PDF right Accessible, yes, no, yes, yes. Current page, okay. All right, so that's just page one. We are going to uh, work on a new page now. New blueprint, custom size. There we go. What is that? Was that a little colored dot there? No idea. A glitch, fine. Maybe I could uh, delete that. I don't know. 
it's a glitch. Now we are going to use a second approach. And what I mean is that we're really using trying to use DP to solve this problem. And what was the problem? Like we still want to solve this Fibonacci problem, but now we want to save calculation. So previously when we were calculating f uh, n equals to f m minus 1 plus f m minus 2 previously when we were doing that we were using like the recursion approach so um, each of this um, each of these components on the right hand side will branch into more uh, 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 more sub calculations and we didn't want to do that so uh, what do you want to do then well it's for example for f5 let's say for f4 yeah let's make it easy for f3 what we really wanted to do is to just you know calculate f uh, calculate f2 once and uh, calculate f1 just once um, yeah let's just do that I mean this is what we are supposed to do we want to do and the f2 that we're talking about is supposed to request uh, f1 once which we already did uh, and f0 right so so we don't if we're just doing it the recursive way this is all the calculation that we're gonna do all these calculations but there's two f1 here so we don't want to calculate this uh, once more uh, right so instead of doing that we are actually going to um, build we're actually going to build from the ground up we build f0 first and then we build f1 and once we build it we don't calculate it once anymore uh, and then we're going to calculate um, uh, F2, I guess. Yeah, because we already have the solutions for F1 and F0. Which, uh, a calculation of F2 is just requires um, a, um, a uh, calculation of uh, 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 addition between F1 and F0. And we can store the results into kind of like a data structure, right? So yeah, I think data structure is something that's uh, important here. Data structure. Yeah, so how are you going to store data? Because dynamic programming, as I understand, it actually requires you to store some pre-calculated, store your calculation results uh, um, pretty uh, uh, frequently as you go. Uh, um, so what you're going to have is you're going to actually have a storage of F0, a storage of F1 as you go, and then you have a storage of F2, uh, and you're going to be actually accessing them all the time, right? Uh, and then once you calculate F3, you're going to, you're going to store F3 as well. Uh, so what kind of a data structure is this? Can you use lists, um, or can you use like I guess hash map, uh, some kind of a map? What, what a map is is that you have an index, uh, and that index is going to lead you to a value. Uh, I think I think the map thing is, is probably going to uh, probably a good choice because it's like an index map, indexed uh, data storage, or maybe dictionary. Right? Dictionary has uh, similar, uh, yeah, dictionary has a similar fashion, and uh, yeah, you can expand dictionary. So we have a few choices here that we can uh, choose from. So list, um, I guess hash maps, map, dictionary, right? So those are the possibilities uh, for storing them. Um, we can try well each of them, but I guess there's pro probably some pros and cons for each of them. But we're not quite clear what what those pros and cons are yet. Uh, but we're, we're going to try them out. Let's say 
uh, we first use in the list. Again, we're, we're all exploring here, right? Let's use lists to store to store the um, to store the uh, the, the data, and um, we're probably gonna make list this list a uh, an attribute or um, property in that class. Let's go back and um, instead of doing this fib, um, let's actually define some properties, right? So mm, in Python, the way you define um, class properties is just by saying, hey, um, diff. Well, uh, I kind of actually forgot, but I do have some class definitions here I, I, I used for a previous project. So let's see. All right, this is how you define it. Uh, right, you have the name and then equal sign, and that's it. All right, and you can initialize it with the uh, empty value. Okay, so um, let's say stored stored list yeah stored list now we're gonna say what it is um, a list to store uh, calculated uh, Fibonacci numbers right um, it's gonna be like the first one, probably zero, and then one, one, two, three, five, eight. Right, 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 okay. All right, that makes sense. And uh, now we're gonna actually define a new, right, V2, this is version two, self, and right um fib v2 uh using dynamic programming for fibonacci series right and uh, we're gonna just uh copy the rest of it Let's, well, yeah. Let Let's just copy the input output. What happened? Oh, here. Yeah, let's just copy that. The rest are the same, so don't worry about the rest. Uh, so what we're gonna do now here is, according to our new plan, uh, we're going to calculate, um from the ground up, so F0 first, right? And how do you calculate these, these F0, F1, F2 values? Well, excuse me, um, you're gonna be, uh, right, uh, calculating, uh, um, based on previous values. So let's say you need um, you need to you know frequently look up the list and you sometimes actually update the list, right? So uh, I guess this involves you know check if um Check if the value is already in the list. Um, if not, what do you do? If not, uh, uh, uh right, like just uh, build the list. If if not, right, yeah, just expand, expand the list until. Expand the list until um, until you have your answer. 
answer, right? Yeah, because if the value is already in the list, then we're good. And we just need to look it up, right? Um, so how do you check that? If, um, I guess, the length, right? So uh, uh, self dot stored list dot lens. I don't, I don't know if that's how you do, uh, uh, yeah, let's just look it up, Python list length, check, how do you do that, uh, you do it by, let's see, len method, okay, there you go, uh, len list, right, that works, so, yeah, so we're going to do, len of self list if, if that length um, is greater than um, n is that right so for example if n equals to zero um, we want the list to at least have a length of one So as long as one is greater than zero, it's good. But if, right, another example, if we want, if we, if we use n equals to one, we need the length to be at least two. Right, makes sense, so that's right. Um, if it is like that, then we can directly return uh, self stored list and we're gonna look up um, for example yeah just look it up yeah look up the nth element in it right right that's what you want um, if not right if not expand the list until you have your answer so else Um, well, let's expand the list, right? So how do you expand the list? Uh, well, you're, you're going to start with that. So wh what do we do? Well, we um, right. self uh, extend. Extend list. It's a function, right? So we're gonna just pass this pass this parameter down there. Uh, and what do you return? You also return that, right? Like after if you if you extended it. Um, Well, you're gonna you're gonna do you're gonna do that again? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna just come back to it again. Come back to this function after extending the list. All right, so and that's it. Um, now you're gonna have to just define the next function. Which is called um, extend list, right? Right. And this function um, extend list um, given number n extend uh, this stored list to uh, 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 to have to have how many elements? Uh, n elements. Is it n or n minus one? Let's see. Uh, if you want to extend to, let's say, n equals to three, zero, one, two, three, then actually you want to have 
n plus 1 elements dry. So meaning 0, 1, n. Yeah, something like that. Okay, how do you do that? Well, mm, you first, you first, um, you know, look at, look at how many elements the list already, already has. Uh, and uh, look at how many we already have and uh, expand it. Uh, yeah, and start from there. Right. Let's actually make a, make this document more complete, you know, best practice, best practice. Uh, an integer return type, none. There's no return type, so we just update the list. That's all. So, uh, yeah. So, of course, we're gonna still check. First, check the length. Uh, we assign like um, n zero, right? N zero equals to the length of the list. Uh, that's how many we already have. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to start from there. We're going to use a for loop. Uh, right, so let's just recap on how to build a Python for loop. For x in the fruits. Right. 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 So for us, we need a for i in range, range function. So uh, I want i to go from n0 all the way to n. So yeah, let's see, Python range function, range 6, a sequence from 0 to 5. Do you have like something like two inputs? Right. From three to five, you're going to do three, six. Hmm. Interesting. So, in our case, we want to go from n0 to n, roughly. So we can do n0, n. Yeah. And uh, so now we have that um, iterator i now. And uh, we're gonna, what we're going to do is are we going to basically apply apply this fib function, uh, right? Well, we're just updating, right? Append. Yeah, we are going to append the list. So how do we append the list? Let's see, Python list append. Depend method, add an item to the end of the list. Yes, that's what we want to do. List append something. Got it. So, uh, self.stored list.append. Uh, we're going to append mm, what? Um, some of their elements. Um, so we're going to do i minus 1 plus i minus 2. That sounds legit, but there are exceptions. Um, so what happens if we are actually at the start? At the start of it, like if yeah, if n zero, if the length is like less than two, because you're gonna have to build the first two 
from scratch to crank to crank start the list so yeah right so um if n0 is less than 2 right we're going to crank it crank start itself dot stored list um, we're just gonna make um, yeah, we're just gonna rewrite it okay um, zero one yeah we're just gonna make it like that so yeah just uh, initialize um, stored list as zero one if stored list has less than two elements yeah less than two elements that's what we're gonna do so if that's not the case we just jump to this for loop and we start we start appending it um yeah and that's uh that's pretty much it right like n zero n so range n zero n what will happen is like it's gonna go start from from n zero uh and all the way to n minus one that means uh that means it's it's, it's not gonna reach n which again is is not ideal so we wanted to reach n so we use n plus one then right uh let's actually now yeah test something else mm. i've built fib v2 and it uses this auxiliary function so test case is for s.fib yeah, we're going to build a different test case. Test case for s.fibv2. Now the DP version. Uh, let's do fibv2 here. Yeah, oops. Um, yep. We're going to build these test cases. But first we need to run. Yeah, let's just restart the kernel so that we can make sure that the class is built with the new definition we don't need this f eater anymore we just use this class definition and then we test this oh wow something's not right this is still consistent but this one is like expect input zero expect zero but we got none let's see what happens if we have fib v2 zero what will happen is that we'll check if if that's if the list is like uh, greater than then and uh, this time if n is zero then uh, it's definitely going to be less than zero. Um, no, no, zero is not greater than zero, so it jumps to this else condition. And we're going to extend zero, extend zero. So n zero is going to be zero. If n zero is less than two, we're going to do the self Short list initialize it to zero and one, and this range range thing this will this sucks right like it'll be zero to because n zero is like zero, uh, and then n is like zero right, uh, n is like zero so zero 
to 0 plus 1, so it's just going to be 0. Append. Yeah, it's, it's actually going to append something, which is what? Oh, it's going to append sort list i minus 1. Right, so yeah, this i will suck because because if i starts with 0, Yeah, it'll, it'll be a problem. So let's just, uh, you know, if it is like either 0 or 1, excuse me, we, we don't really run this thing, okay? Uh, so, actually, it's going to be like an else condition. Now we're gonna do this right 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 and zero and uh, yeah we're gonna call it again extend list n we're going to initialize and call it again extend list well it's an improvement but i i don't i don't know if it's like it's gonna do the thing for me. I can expect it to do something. Yeah, still is buggy. Mm, let's see. We definitely need to do something here. Um, how about let's start the debug mode? Yeah, we'll do that. Now let's start the debug mode. Uh, where is the debug mode? Uh, debug mode view insert cell kernel. Do you have the debug mode? Well, um, I think I think we need to maybe switch to Jupyter Lab in order to start the debug node. So Jupyter Notebook doesn't have the debug. So yeah, we're gonna save it and uh, let's see if we can localhost instead of notebooks. Let's see if we can start lab. Right there is the lab. Um, where is leak code? Leaked code. Ah, uh, leak code. There it is. All right. So there is the debugger now. So where do I want to put the? Uh, yeah, I want to put it here. Well, actually. I want to put it here, okay, and uh, yeah, let's just run it and run this. Now, where are we? Variables, fit v2. Are we in there? Um, step.
I don't know. Um, what was happening? Not too familiar with this debugger here. Uh, solution. Stored list. Length equal to two. Okay, so we have a length of two, but somehow it's not. Input zero, expect zero, but uh, what's what's the problem here? I am a little bit lost. Like, why is the debugger not working? Yeah, I have a breakpoint here, and uh, I'm going to restart and clear all output. Right, and I'm going to run this thing. Right, globals, variables. Tag, source, breakpoints, call stack. Now, line 31. Right, and uh, solution, if we call the solution here, uh, run it, oh, well, what's going on? Solution is not defined, okay. So we need to run this first. Um, run this. Okay, looks like here's where we are. Okay, that's where we are. And we're probably in the debug mode now. Okay, great. Let's see. Um, right now, I think our stored list is like empty, right? So we supposedly step we jump to the else condition because n is what n is zero and the length is also zero it's not greater than zero so it jumps to the else condition it's good so let's um let's actually step in right step in and we stepped into this extend list function here Right, yeah, extent list function, and uh, look, line 45, line 45 is where we are. Um, right, we're gonna first calculate what n0 is, it's supposed to be uh, 0, there it is, uh, and we're gonna judge if n0. Yeah. True. And um, because it's true, we're going inside the if if condition scope, uh, and we're gonna reinitialize um, the stored list to zero and one. Right. So we're gonna see now the list is now zero and one, and the list becomes two. Yeah. Uh, and then we're gonna call this function again iteratively so now we're gonna loop into it again now we're again at line 45 we check uh, the length of the short list so n0 now is probably gonna be 2 if I'm correct and now this if condition doesn't check anymore because n0 is exactly 2 and it's not less than 2 so we jump to the else condition so now we're gonna find the for loop and that's correct. And in this for loop here, we want the iterator i to go from 2 all the way to what? To 0. That, that just doesn't make sense, right? Because maybe this range function cannot support um, the second argument smaller than the first argument because it's going to be like 2 and 1. 
that's just stupid because do we do we need at this point do we need to run this extension um actually we don't right like Once this is done, actually, we already have fulfilled our task if n0 is less than 2, right? No, no, no. We, we still need to um, extend it up to n. So initializing this just means that now um, um, we, um, we have done the initial step. But it doesn't mean that we finished our job. Uh, but also, like if if this n is actually less than two, there's there's then no need to expand, right? Right. So we probably need to add an um, add an if condition on top of this else. So you do a bit an else if. So else if n is greater than 2 otherwise there's no need to expand because we already have it yeah yeah I think so I think that's the one thing we can fix but let's just finish this uh, sub function right um, did we expand anything we didn't and uh, we really didn't um, yeah so now we're back here Next step is we're going to find Fibonacci v2n, come back to this function again, and then um, n is of course 0. We're going to step into it again if the length is greater than n. So the length of it is now greater than n, which makes sense. So self stored list, that is now a uh, two element thing number zero it's gonna be zero right done um so why is it not really returning anything i'm a little confused but anyways, I think we have um, figured out what's going on, and that is we need this. Else, if n is greater than two, right? Yeah, that's what we learned. So, with that being said, we're going to restart that kernel. Uh, rerun this class definition. Uh, go straight to the answer again. Well, there's something wrong. Maximum recursion depth exceeded. Wow. That's some really bad recursion there. All right, so line 36. Line 36. First of all, this zero still didn't check out. Um, the test case for zero also still failed. Uh, zero. So if it's zero, and if this is greater than zero, self sort list zero. Do I have a syntax error for, you know, for producing something? Yeah, let me just make a really quick test of um, my understanding of lists. So test list. Let's make it say like that, right? Uh, I'll just make it zero, make it one there, and then test list. Zero it should be zero, right? Yeah. 
Um, and the one should be one. So there's no problem with that. Uh, so why is it that it does not return what I wanted to see? I guess the only way is that we have to look into it again. Uh, let's put a um, let's again put a put it into debug mode, and we're gonna set a breakpoint on line thirty first. And move along with it. Yeah. Back at line 31. Uh, so at first, the store list is empty. And then we're just going to go there. And it's going to jump into the else condition because zero is not greater than zero. And it's going to extend the list. So after it extends the list, we should see that it becomes two elements. Yeah. And this is the recursion, and this is where, you know, line 36 is where the recursion is bad. Um, so, let's see the whole structure of this function here. Um, check if the value is already in the list. That's legit. And the next, if not, expand the list until you have your answer. Until... Why don't you say expand the list and have your answer? Right, because once you extended the list, you don't need to run the function again. You can, but you don't need to. So let's just, you know, do not, you know, abuse recursion. Excuse me. Let's not uh, abuse recursion and simply um, return the same thing because now you have expanded it. You should be able to return it, right? Uh, so we're gonna run this class definition here. See if it passes. Oh, at least it's better now. Uh, list index out of range. Why is that? Why is that out of range? So for uh, input number two, okay. Input two. So the first two actually passed. So I'm going to actually comment them out and uh, just work with this. All right. Right. Out of range. Yeah. So now let's put a. Uh, um. What was the line? Line 36. Right. Not 36, but I'm going to just put it on 31 again and then run this so that we're back at 30, line 31. Right now, our solution it already has okay, it didn't have anything. Uh, why is that? Oh, because we rebuilt it, we rebuilt it. Yeah, we rebuilt the class, so now it's going to um jump to the else condition and it's going to extend the list and now we should have a list that has two elements zero and one exactly and the self dot stored list uh, n is what n is two come on yeah okay I see the problem
you have not built you have not built that yet now we have zero and one So the list extension has not, you know, expanded extended enough. We need to expand extend one more. Is that is that is that what you're saying? Because it sounds like we need to extend a little bit more. Okay, fine. Stop it. Uh, sounds like we need to do that. One plus two. All right, we're gonna save it. We're gonna restart the kernel and try to run it again. All right. Definition. What? Index out of range. Why does it still do that? Uh, let's find out. It's still not doing right. Like, okay, we're back on line 31. And uh, let's just step and see. Extent list. This time we want to step in. And, uh, oh, I see. Right, right, right. It's only going to give you like two elements, right? Right, it's going to say, hey, we do that. Because n is two. All uh, right, so I guess I guess that is the, the culprit. This is not supposed to be in greater than two. It's supposed to be in greater or equal to two because when it's equal to two, um, you can still do i minus two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's it. I think that's it. All right. Those integers are pretty tricky. So you gotta be, you know, more familiar with them. Uh, now, yes, now everything's fine. Yes, I think now everything's fine. Right, everything's expected. So again, what got us was, you know, these integers got to be careful um, uh, with their with their values whether you, you use equal um, or you know, great greater or equal to or greater than because that one index limit could, could mean totally different things and um, this I minus two um, previously I was thinking for i minus two to mean something, you know, uh, 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 to mean something that doesn't cause error and has to be greater than two, it's actually not true. Uh, because n just, you know, or like for n zero, yeah, n zero. Yeah, it's like the length. Damn. Yeah, this is like tricky. To length, right? So probably we should use L zero because L and N those are confusing things. Length of it, if length is less than two, 
that means we have zero or no element or just one element. Um, yeah. And here, when we're using n, because n starts with zero, and um, uh, we're going to start with what? L0. Yeah, you start from L0. That is where your last element is, right? Say, if the length of this list is 2, that means you have 0 and you have 1. And then you, the next one to append is the third element, but the index of the third element is actually two. So that's the tricky part. Like we, yeah, we need to ex we need to extend the third element, but index-wise, we need to use two. So, because when this is two, when I is two, you're gonna have one here and you're gonna have zero here, which makes sense. Yeah, this, yeah, these integers, they're really tricky. Anyways, I think we just got it and uh, we're gonna, uh, let's just change the names, okay? Uh, this is a fib. This is a fib v2. Yeah, using dp. It's a better definition. So we're going to copy paste this to lead code and uh, submit our second. Well, yeah, our second. Um, Our second code. Right, 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 right. Let's see if, yeah, the format is right. Right, lib fib using dp for that extent list. Um, yeah, this is like extent list. Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it. All right. Right. Let's just run code and see if it works. Do not have a trivia stored list. Okay. Okay. So you need to actually have that definition in, included as well. Okay. But does lead code support that? Well, we are here to find out. We're here to find out. All right. Um, let's test more more cases. All right, it works, and let's submit. Accepted. Okay. Better. Yeah, better. Now this one. It's faster than 40% and uses, yeah, 80% less memory than other people's. So this is like an above average, I guess, above average code. Um, yeah, we're using some kind of a extent list to extend, to work, you know, to work um, our, um, our Fibonacci series from ground up uh, meaning now let's say let's just express you know recap on what we just did I think what we just did is that we are working our way from the ground up starting from f0 and then f1 and then f2 and then f3 uh, so the way this works is that we first work on f0 and we're working on F1. Uh, 
Yeah. Therefore, and then we move on to build F2, right? And we're going to have that. And since we already have F1, we don't need to calculate this anymore. Um, and F3 can be built on top of uh, F2 and F1. Uh, so we, we basically saved ourselves the calculation of uh, F1 again. That's how it works. Uh, and the data structure, yeah, this is using list. The first implementation is using list. Um, and we are using a function called uh, uh, extend, extend list. To, uh, to basically build this data, data structure. Um, and then our main, our main FIPS, you know, our main FIPS function, or FIB function, uh, does this, does this calculation for us. Uh, and uh, this, this iterative condition, it is encoded inside the extend list function, right? So that is our kind of like DP approach. Uh, it is a DP approach in that you know we are we're working um, from the ground up, uh, calculate the you know the, the the milestones, calculate these values as milestones, um, so that when we look back, we don't need to do, we don't need to repeat what we have already done. Um, so yeah, this is like a way to do it. I think it has the spirit of dynamic programming. I could be wrong, but I think so. And uh, yeah, now we have two versions of it. It's good to have two versions of something, you know. Uh, and that's about it, and uh, we can see, you know, we have the recursion solution, which we, uh, which is dumb and simple. We tried it, um, and then what, what else? Bottom-up approach using tabulation. I think maybe that's what we did, right? It's a bottom-up approach, yeah. What else? Um, Top-down approach using memorization. Top down, use memorization. Okay, you are using now dictionary, I see. Iterative bottom up approach. There's a lot of different approaches. Matrix exponent exponentation, uh, math, and yeah, there's a number of approaches, but I think for the first problem here, we are good at staying here. Um, I'll be posting, I'll posting my sketches uh, in the link below, and um, uh, thank you for watching. We'll move on to the next problem the other day, so see ya next time.